I can see infinity in the city, but nothing's permanent. Nothing's permanent. When I first came to the realization of my potential, all these synchronicities started occurring in my life. Beautiful mystical experiences, and they appeared to me to be supernatural. I was awestruck. And then I realized that really my ego was trying to make it into something special so that I would not come to a realization of what was truly happening to me. But right now, the supernatural appears natural. It's just ordinary. The real supernatural experience is being human and being artists, kind of like co-creators of the earth. Two thousand twelve is the point in time where enough people collectively are setting their intentions or embracing this potential.
we get so distracted with all this technology, which technology has its practical uses, but sometimes technology uses us. And we, by nature, create distractions so we don't have to face ourselves, so we don't sit in that moment of silence that we call boredom and really get to know ourselves so we don't feel comfortable in our skins. And when we do, we live in balance with the earth because the earth reacts. Okay, the understandings of this prophecy rock actually is known as life plan or path, Katsinovoti, that it does lay out of two paths that actually humanity has a choice on, either a description given for the top path, referred to as the materialistic path, or the bottom one, which is the right path to follow with certain predictions and, and, and um, previsions uh, tied into it. But a uh, top path of materialism shows the people all unified. But if we continue of our ways of destruction, taking from the earth, or even the world leaders press the buttons for all the nuclear atomic missile hits, or the Moss House description given as the gourd full of ash, destruction, you know doing away with humanity and the earth and will be bits of particle dust in the endless space. But if we follow the right path and continue in the right manner of our life path that has been laid out, and if we do continue to the extent of the end days or judgment days, the leader or savior that is to come will be leading the exodus of people into the next level or next world. Uh, so it just all depends on how humanity helps to control of understandings uh, uh, with our humanity spirit and the people of uh, this whole world, you know, there'll be that continuance. What do you think is the one factor that can get us living in balance with the earth again? It's really not going to be one, it's going to be multiple understandings and um, teachings are already out there and laid out. It's just that we need to understand or accept and, and you know, pick up the, these teachings to have a little more thorough understanding, which, you know, we did veer off of the wrong path, so we can come back to those teachings. So there is a uh, symbolical line connecting from the top materialistic path to the bottom to represent of convergence, that people can change their ways, and uh, maybe for the betterment and the good, you know, of all humanity. Uh, so it's uh, a collective of so many factors but you know we have to I guess you know individually we are to be that change first to maybe show up to change you know within around the world or give that influence of change to, to all mankind.
Blessings everyone again from the Coconino National Forest in Flagstaff, Arizona. I'm along the Arizona Trail, which interconnects with other trails that go to Mexico and all the way to Canada. And anyway, I turn the camera around. Beautiful skies, the trees, just amazing blue skies. So, on the spiritual journey through each successive life, through rebirth after rebirth, on our way towards eventual light enlightenment. It all really boils down to this. The mind should never be separated from loving, kindness, and compassion. So it's all about letting go of afflictive emotions, those things that we've heard time and time again that don't serve us, we should let them go. So I'm reminded of a story in Buddhism about the lotus flower, how even though it sits in the mud, it's still unstained, it's still beautiful. And uh, it travels up from the bottom of the mud in the pond, as a bud, and then wind its way up with other lotus flowers. And then finally, when it reaches the top of the water, it opens up and awakens. And it's just pure beauty. So, uh, a lot of us on the spiritual path are here in this part of the journey, but we want to get to another place to hurry up to get to enlightenment. And uh, in some cases, we get stressed out about that. We want to be enlightened. We want to be awakened. You know, so, I'll give you the metaphor of what I've heard before. There goes the thunder beings again is that you're exactly where you need to be on the path at any given moment, any given step. And we should master the step that we're in right now. Instead of trying to push for a step that we, we want to get to, we should master the step we're in right now. So we're all exactly where we need to be on the path at any given time. So, that's really what I wanted to say. I've put out six other films and if you all are interested in seeing those, you'll please feel free to check them out. But we can talk about spirituality all day long, intellectualize it, argue about it, See, this religion is right, that religion is wrong, on and on and on. But it all really boils down to this. The mind should never be separated from loving kindness and compassion. So, thank you all for letting me share my journey. It's been a learning experience for me to be able to articulate my feelings and thoughts on this. I hope anyone else who comes across this may benefit too. So, blessings for the last time from the Coconino National Forest in Flagstaff, Arizona. I wish everybody wonderful journeys through life. May you be blessed and uh, realize your inner nature, which is love and compassion. May you never be separated from that.
This is the third day of my fasts, my vision quests. I received so many blessings to do this. And all I've been drinking is wonderful food. I had many realizations. The main one is we need to live in the heart of compassion towards each other. Really care for each other. And how do we do that? We need to care for ourselves too. We really need to care for our mental and physical self. times that we can sit by ourselves and contemplate and really get to know ourselves. We need to have more patience with each other, more kindness, more compassion. This is really the true awakening. It's not the economy, economy, collapsing, all the tsunamis, the aliens, and all this other stuff that's going to wake us up. We have to do the work ourselves. We have to take responsibility. We're given a choice right now in this time. Many other people are waking up in compassion and feeling their hearts and feeling others. You know, if could sit in that moment of silence and really get to know yourself out in nature. Do a one, two, three day fast. That'll wake up the heart. And then when you see somebody, you really care for them. You just don't shine them off. You see a homeless man, you might want to give him a hug or a smile. You know, because you feel him. You, you feel his pain. And it, it, it's an inst that, that feeling is an inspiration to reach out to that person. You, you got your neighbor who's 65 years old who can't mow her lawn, you know. Do it while she's gone grocery shopping. Don't expect nothing. If you feel, if you can feel your heart, you can feel other people. So there are many tools that we can use to do this. One is the vision quest, which I do. I've done over 30. I stopped counting it for 30. Currently, I'm on my third uh, day of my vision quest, my three-day fast, and it's really reawakened the heart uh, of compassion. Uh, it's reminded me of how much we are all connected together. So this 2012 thing, awakening, yes, yeah, a nice idealistic thing. It, it works as an inspiration, so we can work together, and there is some goodness to it. But we all need to take responsibility for ourselves to generate the heart of compassion within each other. It is there. It's, all it takes is just to sit and contemplate other people's suffering or contemplate our suffering and take the time uh, to really get to know ourselves in uh, nature. And sit in that moment of silence that we like to call boredom. And sit in that non-distractive moment where we don't have technology, books, cell phones, computers, all this other stuff. Just go out to nature and sit for a day and fast and feel that heart. And when you can feel that heart, you'll realize we're all connected. We're all one. And from that place, you can work outward. You radiate outward because you feel your own compassion. And when you see somebody sad, you want to go out and help them. Uh, so that's where it starts. It's right here in this heart. Right now, this very moment, you can go out and develop it. And so that's what the awakening is about. Whether it happens in 2012, whether it happens in the next two minutes or after 2012, it doesn't matter. 2012 is just a point in time where many people are getting together to try to shoot for a starting point at this point. But take responsibility now. Go out in the nature. Remind yourself who you are. Sit in that moment of silence with no distractions, nothing. Maybe journal in a book so you can articulate how you feel. And get to know yourself. And then come back to the city and figure out ways. Volunteer in the community. Help your neighbor. Start 
developing and cultivating that heart of compassion. It'll inspire other people. It'll inspire your neighbors. So that's what I got to say. Uh, please love each other.